Hi guys, have you ever wanted to try a grafted tomato on a potato rootstock but were kind of pushed away when you looked at the price in the catalogs? I was looking in one catalog and it cost over $16 for just one plant. So today I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. The first thing you're going to need is a healthy tomato and a potato plant and the diameter of the stems have to be roughly the same size. This is something you're going to have to start for yourself at home because by the time you would buy these things from the store and graft them, you're going to be getting into the garden a little late. You're also going to need a razor blade, a cutting knife, an X-Acto knife or something like that that's very sharp and clean, grafting cake, and some material to sterilize your cutting edge. It might be bleach or I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol today. Now if your razor blade is brand new, you can bypass that. You don't have to worry about causing any problems for your plants. Obviously the first step is to choose the right plants. Your sign variety, which is the tomato portion, whatever variety you're going to grow, I happen to choose big beef. And the rootstock, the bottom section, I'm going to use Burbank Russet because that's my favorite potato. And as I said before, you want to start out with disease-free plants, which means you don't want to grow potatoes from potatoes in the kitchen. You want to get some that are certified disease-free seed potatoes. And then of course you can start your own tomatoes. That's called the cyan variety. Step two is to sterilize your tools. You can simply dip your cutting edge into a little bit of isopropyl alcohol or bleach and be sure and if you're using bleach, especially if you're using concentrated bleach, be sure and rinse it off well and then dry it off. You don't need to use 100% bleach. A 10% bleach solution, which means one part bleach to nine parts water will be just fine. Mix as little as possible because you just aren't gonna need that much. Before cutting the plants, make sure they're well watered and well hydrated. You might want to water them about an hour before you do this. And then what you're going to do, cut two diagonal cuts on your tomato. And you want to do this up near the top of the plant. You don't want a lot of leaves on the plant. Then trim off all the extra plant material on your rootstock or your potato plant. And then select one of the branches, as I said before, one of the stems that's about the same size as the tomato section. Cut it off about an inch or two above the surface of the soil and then through in the middle slice down about a half of an inch. If you go less than that it'll be difficult to tape it together. Then the next thing you do is carefully insert the tomato into the sliced area of the potato and this is where you have to match up what we call the cambium layers. This is the layer of where cell division takes place or growth just below the surface. If it was a, a a tree would be just below the bark, but you don't really have bark on a tomato. So just below there, try to match them up as best you can. And then secure the plant together with grafting tape. That might be a little tricky, but keep at it. Wrap it till, till it is very well secured. You don't want it moving while it's healing. Now after you've grafted the plant and wrapped it, then you should enclose it in a plastic bag what I do is I mist my plants for a few days and it takes about seven to ten days, almost two weeks, and then you'll notice that the graft is taken because the top will stop wilting. What I would do is I always misted the plant every now and then during the course of the day. I wanted to be sure that it was well watered. I, I even put a small cup of water on top of the soil under there so that the humidity stayed as close to 100% as possible because the plant has to repair itself before it can start picking up water through the xylem tissue again. Now you will have additional growth on the tomato rootstock and what you should do is just cut some of that off and then when you plant your tomato be sure that the graft union is above ground because if you put it below ground the tomato will start to produce roots and it'll probably overgrow the the potatoes. Now whether or not that'll prevent you from getting potatoes, I'm not sure. That's something I'm going to have to try in the garden. But normally we do not want the cyan to root once we've done a graft. That's especially true on fruit trees. So give it a try. Uh, on my first opportunity to try it, it worked. So it's not difficult if you use good technique. And uh, by the way, this would be a good idea if you go to a farmer's market. There are very few, I've never seen this in a farmer's market, where people bring in grafted plants where you could choose the top. It might be a cherry tomato or a grape tomato and different types of potatoes on the bottom. 
and sell them for less than what you get in the catalog company might be a way to make a little money. It is going to be some work. Uh, you have to have the plant lights or a greenhouse or something to uh, get this to work. But if you have the supplies, give it a try. This is Gary. I'll talk to you later. Bye.